Ackerman joins us right now, member of the Foreign Relations Committee. This is right up your alley, Senator, if you think about it. Uh, you know, foreign relations, well, they're at the tender hooks here with the president now pushing NATO to, to the edge here. You've got to, got to, got to pay up. Uh, and separately, uh, inviting their wrath on these trade issues. Are you surprised that it's gotten the response it has? The European Commission had is saying effectively, um, you know, watch, watch your allies. You don't have that many of them. Well, first on the 2% NATO commitment, they ought to do it. You know, I mean, I think the president's right on that. And he's seen some real progress, $14 billion more in defense spending just in the last year. So the European countries are starting to come on board. I think they understand that, you know, we've borne the lion's share of this for too long and it's time for them to step up more. On trade, though, I got to tell you, Neil, uh, you know, I've talked about this before. We got to be careful because if they're doing something unfair in terms of trade, yeah, use our unfair trade laws and go after them. You can use the international rules, the WTO rules. But if you use a national security mechanism like 232 against trade, you don't have to prove any injury. You don't have to prove any unfair trade. You simply say it's because of our national security. My concern there is, one, you're going to get serious retaliation, as you have seen and you're going to have other countries use the same mechanism against us. That means higher tariffs. That means bad for consumers. That well, means bad for Well, are you raising this with the president? I notice Republicans, this goes against your DNA to fight these kind of battles. Um, you're generally a laissez-faire party, you know, keep the government out. This president, though, seems to be given a little bit of latitude here. Maybe you remember his feel and your colleagues feel, you know, he's been proven right on some things. It's worked out. And you're, you seem to be keeping your faith that this will all work out. Well, first of all, there's two different, I think, areas here. One is China, and I think there you have a lot of consensus that China is using unfair trade. And what we're going after them on under what's called Section 301 is about unfair trade. That's appropriate. And although it's going to hurt some of our exporters here and it's going to hurt some of our consumers here, people do realize you, you got to take on China and deal with this unfair trade Yeah, but trade we're going issue. after everyone else, Senator. We're going exactly. after Canada and that, Mexico, that's the issue. Europe. When you're going after that your might allies. Be justified, but what do you tell the president? Some of your colleagues were saying, well, we want this approved in, in the Senate. You can't just willingly yeah. do this on your own. And it didn't go I've, anywhere. I've talked to him about it, of course. And, and I talked to Secretary Mnuchin as recently as last night about it. Uh, I have a call with the trade representative this afternoon on it, uh, Bob Lighthizer. And I do think we have to be careful and we have to be targeted and specific. So, look, if a well, country they're obviously like ignoring you, Senator. Right. They're not they're not eating. Well, that. I, I think they have a plan. I, I just don't know if it's going to work because right. the, the plan would be you put pressure on by increasing the tariffs using a national security rationale. And, you know, hard to explain how you use national security on some of these tariffs. But let's you use that rationale. And then eventually, you know, they'll cry uncle and they'll come around to other issues we want them to be concerned about, like like auto tariffs. The, the Europeans do no. have higher auto tariffs than we do. We have high light truck tariffs, but they have high auto tariffs. But Neil, this is where you have a negotiation. And with allies, uh, you don't want to have a situation where they are turning to other trading partners. You want them to continue to buy our stuff. Well, that's what's happening. I mean, the fact that Germany and China are even talking about doing their own thing, does that worry you? Well, look, we're the biggest market. We're the right. biggest economy in the world. They want to deal with us. Uh, so ultimately, uh, you know, it worries me, but not a lot. And okay. I think that's one reason the markets are reacting as, as they are. But let's talk to them as allies. Uh, okay. Let's negotiate this thing. Let's be sure that they know we're serious. And let's use the kind of trade remedies where they can't then turn around and retaliate against us. Yeah, that's always a, a threat. For Let tat. me switch gears. And I'm, I'm jumping. I apologize. And yeah. people get furious, as they should. Um, Brett Kavanaugh and his uh, journey uh, to, to become the next Chief Justice. Uh, justice, I should say. Um, do you're, you, you're promoting him yeah, already. I know. I'm already promoting the guy. I like that. Uh, do you think it's going to be hard? I was thinking of the Chief Justice because he, of course, is one who's not keen on breaking precedent, legal precedent. We're told that uh, Judge Kavanaugh might have a different mindset on that. That could come up on Roe v. Wade. But what do you think of this whole thing? I think he's a great pick, and I don't think he'll have a hard time at the end getting confirmed. But there'll be a real fight here, and unfortunately, it'll be a partisan fight. In other words, it won't be about this guy's qualifications, clearly qualified. His, his brilliance, his intellectual brilliance, clearly he's a very smart guy. It won't be about his record because he has been a fair and impartial judge. I think the right philosophy that most people want. Uh, so I, I'm concerned that it's becoming too partisan. You know, this town is enveloped in partisanship now to the point that even before he's picked, everybody says, you know, the other side of the aisle can't support him. We don't know who he is yet. So I, I do hope that we'll have a fair hearing here, that he has a chance to be properly vetted. I think people are really going to like him. 
I happen to know the guy, Neil. I, I've known him for over 15 years. I also know his wife. They both served in the Bush administration with me and uh, really fine people. And as you saw you last know, night... You know, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski like him. Yeah. Well, they, I'm sure they like him because who, who wouldn't like this right. guy? They may, they may have some differences in terms of judicial philosophy, but they voted for Neil Gorsuch. And, and this guy, Brett Kavanaugh, to me, is very much in the mold of Gorsuch in terms of his judicial approach, which is one of restraint, but also independence and impartiality. In other words, he's not going to go in with his own set of views. He's going to hear every case as it comes down. As you know, in the process here, when there were you know, three and four people on the list, sometimes Brett Kavanaugh wasn't the top pick of some people on that's the right, right. That's right because of his independence. And I think that's what you want in a justice. That's what most people want. So I, I hope that he can get confirmed with a pretty strong vote and end up on the court and then prove his skeptics wrong because I think he's going to be a great justice. All right. We shall see. Always a pleasure, Senator. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Good to be on with you.